Hi there and welcome back. If you're new through this channel, this is Channel Live where I show off some of my music production projects and talk about the hardware I use and things like that. Today we are going to try to answer the question what's the best CPU for to use for music production. It's not really that easy to answer but I'm going to try in this video. I get many questions about that, what type of CPU you, you should use for music production, what kind of laptop is good for music production, and on other general questions about computer hardware and how it's going to affect music production. So I may, in, in some of my comments, I may link to this video and uh, hi if you <laughs> got linked from one of my comments. So I'm going to try to talk a little about the subject and give you one concrete thing you can do today to find out how the CPU you are thinking of performs. But first I would like to take a quote from the Ableton Live user manual where it tr tries to help answer this question. And if you don't use Ableton Live, I think this is still good advice that can be applied to other DAWs as well. Before you decide what CPU sh you should get, a clock speed above 2 GHz is generally recommended as a minimum. This doesn't mean that music software won't work at all if you have a CPU under 2 GHz, but it will probably be quite slow. Remember you also have to run the operating system, which is perhaps in your case Windows, and uh, 2 GHz is, in my opinion at least, the minimum. So with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about multi-core. So nearly all CPUs today, they have multiple cores on one chip. That basically means that it has several CPUs inside one package. I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but if this is a CPU, inside here you actually have a few more cores. So this is good because let's take Ableton Live as an, ex an, as, as an example. Ableton Live can divide itself into several threads in order to be able to run on multiple cores. So one thread in Ableton Live, it could be perhaps one audio clip playing followed by some effects on that audio clip and then routing it to the master output. That could be one thread. And you could also have another thread with another uh, audio clip and then another one with a VST instrument such as, for example, Serum or something like that. And then these uh, three or four tracks will divide itself on that CPU. So as of this filming, Ableton Live supports 64 th threads that's uh, mostly more than consumer CPUs are today, but you can get some higher end CPUs with more threads than that. But I think that in the future, they will probably have a unlimited thread support. And uh, as for FL Studio, it also supports multi-threading, but I haven't found any limits. So it's, I think it supports uh, maybe unlimited, but no, don't quote me on that. And if you use Logic from Apple and if you use it on an Apple product it will work on the Apple product you don't have to worry about cores and everything because Apple do that for you. So what CPU should you get then? What should you focus on? Is it more important with single core speed or is multi-core more important? Well the answer here is actually that uh, both are important. Both multi-core and also the clock speed. So if your wallet allows it, you should get the fastest CPU with the most cores you can afford. If you can't, a CPU with more cores and less clock speed will be more helpful for you if you have large set sets with a lot of tracks or large instruments or a lot of effects. A CPU with a higher clock speed and fewer cores will give you a better single threaded performance and if your projects are small with few tracks this could be considered as well. Again the answer it's not set in stone it's uh, very difficult to recommend a concrete product you do need to do your own research and 
out of how much you are able to afford. Think about how you are going to work and make a decision out of that. If you know you are going to work with a lot of tracks, uh, huge projects with a lot of effects and a lot of tracks, you should try to get the most amount of cores you can afford. And if you have smaller projects with just a few tracks, you can focus on higher clock speed and fewer cores. But again, in the end, the most beneficial here is the highest clock you can afford with the most available cores. So here is one tip for you, you can try right now if you want. If you have a CPU in, in mind and want to quickly see where it stands, you can check one of my videos where I test a certain CPU and you can compare it to the one you are thinking about with the one I tested in the video. I have a few videos of that so I'm probably going to link them here or in the description below. So one way of doing this is you can just go to Google and you can type in for example R9 3900X, that's one of the CPUs I have tested. And then you type VS a CPU you are going to try. For example, I got a comment from a guy who wanted to know how the R7 3700X performs. So you then, you then go to Google and you type in R9 3900X VS R7 3700X. So this will give you some results and uh, you, will go, you will get to some benchmark sites where you can see these two CPU specifications compared side by side. And out from that you can see how many cores my CPU had when I tested it and you can see how many cores your CPU you're thinking about has and clock speed and everything. And sometimes you also get some kind of benchmarking data and uh, it can help you deduct on how, how it will perform in, in your computer. And if you also watch my videos where I test those CPUs. So I'm not able to buy every CPU out there and test it. So this is one way of getting that information at least. I just wanted to mention another thing that is, could be confusing for people. Uh, it's that CPU meter in Ableton Live at least. That CPU meter does not represent the load on your system. The CPU meter only shows you the audio buffer load. It's not the system load. So if you want to see your system load, you have to open up Task Manager and go to CPU there and check the load there and you will see that it uh, will be different from the CPU load in Ableton Live. So I hope this helped you. I get questions about CPUs and the hardware often but it's really difficult to give uh, concrete suggestions on what to buy. It always depends. It always depends on what type of project you are working on, what type of project you are thinking of working on and uh, your budget of course and everything like that. So uh, at least I hope this video helped a little bit and uh, helps you decide uh, what type of CPU sh you should get and not getting more confused. So if you like this video clicking that bell icon will give you a notification when I release new videos. Subscribing also helps, but uh, I also appreciate if you click that bell icon because if you don't do that, YouTube won't show you uh, new videos from me. If you want to support other ways, I have a Patreon as well, and I have some links below to my social media, Spotify, website, and uh, things like that. So I guess that's all for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.